Well guys, Louis here and welcome back to the garden. I welcome you back to Acorn Hill. It has been a while since I've uh, touched base with you guys uh, months before I even put out this new video for spring 2023. Today I'm in the garden. I'm on uh, right beside one of the beds that I built last spring. It's been a year ago since I built this and I will be putting a link on the description box and on the screen so that you can see what happened and what transpired a year ago when I built this garden bed. There are four of them. This is the one over here. And then I got one on either side. This one right here, one over there, and on the other one on the right side, the upper uh, part of the screen. Uh, today I am starting the cleanup. It is going to be a busy February for me. Uh, little did I know that with additional beds, I will be having quite a lot of mess and dried material that I need to clear before all of these plants start to grow again. For this particular episode today, I will be showing you how I will clear this bed. I'll put the camera down on a camera stand on a tripod and just give you a time lapse of what I'm going to be doing. But this plant in front of us, this is... Uh, one of our heritage roses that I got from a local grower last year. It has grown really well. I have quite a lot of branches and good buds um, forming on this. Um, late winter is the time. Late winter is the time when we start pruning them so that we could shape it, allow more blooms to happen during the growing season, and really just give this plant an overall healthy uh, look and coax it into a good success story for the rest of the growing season so uh, today I'm just gonna clean up this bed I'll show you what will happen the before and after but this is the before right now last spring and into the summer I wrapped this with this bird netting only because it was new and uh, the roots are not well established yet as you can see these are all tangled up all the way into the branches and even in the new buds we may damage a few buds uh, growing right now see some of them are coming off now um, and I will carefully remove them so that we don't damage some of these healthy um, there we go so those healthy leaflets and <clears throat> branches that are about to shoot out uh, for the season it's okay because we're, we're still quite early um in the preparation stage so if some of them break off then that's fine but i'm going to shape it prune it and uh, show you the after once i'm through with this garden bed so uh, it's going to be a short hopefully a short but uh, a meaningful and information packed uh, session or episode today so i'll show you what it looks like so hang tight and we'll see in a little bit when i show you the after So here we are. What I did was initially pruned all the unruly long branches and long stalks, uh, long primary branches of this rose. This rose is called All Dressed Up. Coming from our label over here, a rose that's grown by Weeks, Weeks Roses. This rose is pink, it is blousy, it has a very full uh, multi petaled almost like a cut across cabbage uh, structure uh, that's why we like it and it performed really well down here in the south um, what I did was just to cut it so we can have this nice arc shape right up above now there are some longer branches like this one as you can tell which we will be pruning and what I do with the prune is I typically, as a general rule, I pick which one is the outer bud, which is this one coming out right there. Of 
mentally that gets focused that outer bud is what I will guide myself pruning from and at an angle I really wish you could see it but it's it's the camera right now and the light but I, I do it at an angle and I just cut it right above right above that um, bud I'll be managing all my cut lines a little bit more neatly because right now they are not they really are not as clean as I hope they would be and and that's just to prevent any disease from coming into uh, the rose itself so, so far so good with this one rose I have another one over here that's still caught and entrapped in that bird netting that I will be removing so we'll see you back soon again now the second rose that I have is uh, some serious growth problems it has really overgrown within the netting the bird netting that I put it in last year and so there are probably branches that are about three feet long coming from the base of this plant we want to protect the crown and i think the crown has done really well over the fall uh, the past growing season into the fall and now spring 2023 so we're going to be really taming this today be interesting how it will look like but this is the before picture of it compared to the other picture of um, the first rose bush that I trimmed. So we'll see how this goes today. I only plan on doing this bed for today because I got a few things happening inside. Um, it should be fun. I'm slowly getting my way back into the garden. Slow but steady is the name of the game right now. Now just to show you guys, the growth on this other bush is much more vigorous and it's a different rose, it's not the same, but you can see that we now have quite a lot of buds and some new leaflets that have uh, come up and have grown out. Uh, this is exposed to full sun. Uh, we have a lot of different branches that are way down in the middle. Um, the trick that I do here is very simple and you can read all of this in all the gardening books. But what I found useful is those that are those branches that grow inward like this one. So you have this outward growing stem and then here's another stem that grow inward. This is one that I will remove because we don't want this growing all the way into the center by the crown uh, of the plant and start getting a very crowded inside now there are some branches like this one right here that grow from all the way inside inside of this uh, bush and there it is so that we will remove these are just you know outgrowths from last year and even that one right there so the idea is to give it a lot of um, air circulation so that throughout the summer and the humid months there won't be any humidity caught inside the bush um, which will impede the healthy growth of the plant um, so just wanted to point that out to you real briefly uh, again anything that grows inward within this area of the bush I will remove um, and then slowly reduce the height and form a much more rounded crown um, along the branch line up above so that the growth of this rose uh, will be vigorous throughout the growing season. Um, I'm planning on just doing minor maintenance to these bushes so I'm spending some time now in making sure that they are uh, nicely shaped and pruned uh, will give it a good start in life this season. Here's a good looking vignette here on this sunny Saturday. Here are our leftover hyacinths that we planted into the ground in the landscape from last year. Uh, it's heating up and so hyacinths are slowly pushing from the ground. Uh, a really nice refreshing view for spring uh, for this Saturday while I'm doing my garden job. Here's a remnant uh, trunk, an old desiccated trunk from 
Arlenium that I grew last year. I left the bark and the remnant um, stump on them um, in the ground so that they will decay and add more nutrients to the ground for this growing season. They turned into beasts last year and these plants I grew from seed um, just about the size of a mung bean and they've really grown into mini trees uh, throughout the summer. Um, and, and pardon me, they're not Hellenium, Helleniums, they were Tithonias, um, which were uh, my favorite um, annual from last year. They were overgrown and became really wild in this uh, bed, but it overtook the entire bed. I'll show you pictures of it as we are going along, uh, continuing with our cleanup here in this garden bed. I am crouched down on garden level, on soil level, just making sure, look how big this thing is. Look at that. And then, with the elements, the moisture, the snow that passed through the area, they just became real soft now, uh, easier for me to pick and uh, clean up. In any case, by the way, that's uh, a big mass of a dandelion that I will be removing. That uh, looks nice right now with the structure of the leaves, but that is weed and we will take that out in a little bit. But just wanted to give you a little uh, thing of what I'm doing here. Uh, these are verbenas, verbena bonariensis, the purple verbenas that I really, really like. Uh, they survived the winter. Here's another one and hopefully we'll have a good mass of verbenas uh, interspersed within the roses. That's the new rose. Um, you may think that this pruning habit and pruning method is very, um, is very risky and um, um, really hard on the plant. In fact, no, uh, the plant likes that. And now that we have the good structure of it, then we'll be able to hopefully grow big roses coming off of that branch. Here's a brief side note, guys, as we continue with the video. This was the same rose all dressed up that we grew last year. Uh, it has been a year now since we planted them, but the first year, 2022, when they were put in the ground, they produced so much of these full, they're about three and a half inches across these full heads of roses uh, that really had that intoxicating scent to it. So I hope that the DNA of these roses have been kept and they have been preserved really well throughout all the elements and throughout the changes of the season so we can get another full uh, show this year. Uh, in total, we probably had about 18 uh, to 20 individual blooms off of each bush. We're coming off of that bush. Now compare that to this bush. This bush is slightly larger, longer. I'm trying to experiment. Let's see how um, this will grow. They will grow well, but uh, we'll make sure that we give you updates between this rose, the one that we have just cut to uh, a moderately long um, set of stems compared to this very, very short set of stems on this one. Um, feeding the roses, I usually feed them oh, by around March, late March into April. Weak solutions of nitrogen and um, once I see some buds, then I start pumping up the fertilizer into the rich uh, phosphorus uh, kind, uh, phosphate kind. So we'll, we'll also give you updates on how we do our um, fertilizing as uh, we go along this growing season. I appreciate you watching my video today, guys. Welcome back to the garden, and thanks again for all the subscribers that have uh, put out um, and you know comments and told me that I'm doing something right in my garden. We're a small channel, we're growing steadily, and that's how I like it. Um, I hope that these little tidbits are helping you along the way. If you're a beginner gardener or a moderator, a professional gardener, I'm learning a lot from you guys. Thanks again for being a part of the channel and we'll see you back soon here in Acorn Hill. Bye-bye for now.